being live streamed, I believe. So, um, hello. Uh, we are from Connect Ottawa. This is Margaret Ann Davis reporting from downtown Fitzroy Harbor. And uh, you've seen us on earlier doing a little trial run uh, on LinkedIn Live and Facebook Live, but here we are back again. So uh, we have some volunteers and part of our uh, amazing group, the VIP members in Connect Ottawa that uh, we decided to come on live and uh, share, care, learn together, um, because that's what we do. So if you haven't been part of Connect Ottawa or participated in any, any of our events, what we really are about is, yes, it's about the connecting, but also about learning and sharing by providing uh, and the exchange of information within each other. I'll uh, pass it over. What we're going to do is going to pass it over to uh, co-founder Bernie Fransgrode. He can share a little bit more about that. And if there's any tips or uh, suggestions he'd like to add first before we go around the room and introduce our members. So Bernie, is there anything you'd like to share today? Oh, every day there's a, there's a, there's something to share. Um, so uh, next Wednesday, uh, we have a special event, uh, Wednesday evening, uh, one about uh, doing filming about your, uh, your presentation style and another person that will come up and uh, read uh, body language and read the body, the face without actually looking at the whole body and give you a read on it. And it's not so much uh, to look for people hiding things as opposed to understanding uh, what's going on. So that, that's one thing that's coming up. Um, what else is going on? Well, Life's life, Thursday. It's almost the weekend, and uh, it's, it's it's a big smile. Go ahead, Margaret. Let's go Tuesday. Who's who's on Tuesday? Ah, Green Apple Pay is on Tuesday, and they're they're going to be talking about uh, fundraising, and uh, they have a SaaS program that helps take. You know, we have the spare change. Uh, well, the spare change comes out and goes back to your to your foundation of choice, or your charity of choice. Okay, cool. Well, uh, that's great. And Bertie, how do they uh, get uh, find the links and uh, register to come to these events? Well, uh, they just go into the uh, Connect Ottawa LinkedIn page and they'll see posts in there. They'll have all those links showing up. And I will put some in the in the chat ever so shortly and we'll go from there. Perfect. Okay. Thanks a lot, uh, Bernie. That was great. Um, so Connect Ottawa, we like to invite you to join the Connect Ottawa business community. Again, Bernie will be putting that into the chat box and we'll also post it outside this stream. So you could just click it and come and join us. Uh, really local and global. It doesn't matter if you've got a business, you've got an idea or you're working for somebody, come on out and join us because that's how we'd be better together. Um, you'll meet like-minded networkers, uh, start building relationships and opportunities to communicate by sharing your blogs, posts and engaging conversations. And we wanna get everybody doing that in our network. Uh, practice your communication and public speaking skills at events like this. And of course, meet our VIP. So on that note, we're gonna go around the room and do some quick introductions. We'd love to know who's on our call today, who you are, what you do, and is there anything we could do to help you? And did you have a win this week? Is there something you'd like to share? So, you know what, Lisa, I am gonna start with you because I know you've had a huge few wins the past week or two. Yeah, so I've had some, uh, oh, 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 let me start from the beginning. My name is Lisa for, and I own the Muse Productions and uh, that's a talent agency and I'm second coffee in today. It's been pretty busy. Uh, we've had some really big wins. Uh, Netflix uh, has been uh, lock and key. Uh, CBS Ghost, uh, actors all around Ottawa and Toronto are booking like crazy through my agency and I'm just so grateful. Like my goal, I remember when I started out, like when I was just starting out as an agent, I'm like, I just want to get like one reoccurring character role. Like that's all I want. Cause I kept booking like these one-offs, but now I have over 20 actors in a reoccurring series. So it's just, it's just been amazing. So that's been my win. That is awesome. So just before we leave you, Lisa, I have a question. So uh, you said actors, actresses, like, so does that mean if somebody wants to act, do they should get in touch with you or how does that work? Well, it's a little bit of a process. <laughs> uh, but you can check out the information on my site too, uh, themuseproductions.ca. Uh, but definitely you have to be a little bit experienced. You can't just kind of jump in and be like, I want to be a professional actor. Okay. okay. <laughs> so some training, professional headshots and a demo reel. That's kind of a good place to start. So as a talent agent, you uh, would be a good person to connect with and walk them through the process? 
Yeah, absolutely. If somebody's interested and they're just kind of curious about how to get going, I like to help people as much as I can. So Okay, perfect. Thank you. You know, it's really cool to hear this, like, you know, in, in the big city of Ottawa and uh, having someone like you on here, because that really shows our creative side and shows that there's lots of opportunity in Ottawa. And I've seen some videos and uh, little commercials with Lisa, and she is quite the lady. So uh, you always make <laughs> me smile. Glad you're here today. So uh, how about Tanya Hewitt? How, how's Tanya? I'm just fine, Margaret Ann. So my name is Tanya Hewitt and I have a consultancy practice called Beyond Safety Compliance. Um, there are a lot of people who just see work as a necessary part of being in society. You know, you just need to do it because that's just the way it is. Um, instead of seeing uh, work as something that can be part of your personal growth, part of your, you know, getting getting some fulfillment out of it. You know, there's uh, a lot of people I know. Uh, you know, there's well, we're we're Wednesday today, uh, or are we Thursday? Yeah, we're Thursday today, and so you know, people are just, oh gosh, uh, you know, I just can't wait for Friday. Thank God it's Friday, kind of stuff. Um, looking only for weekends, vacations, and the all-elusive retirement. And there's, when, when work is perceived that way, we don't necessarily get the, the real benefit of having the workplace being part of our lives. So in order to do that, though, workplaces need to change the way that they are functioning. And that is what I can help with. There are a lot of concepts out there that I think have a very niche market and they need to get more traction in the workplace. So that's that's where I am. So beyond safety compliance, how does your work look? Thank you, Tanya. And what's kind of cool with Tanya is she actually got uh, started in her business, probably about the start of the pandemic is when we uh, met. Um, and uh, one of the cool things that Tanya has also done is uh, she has a monthly event. And uh, Tanya, would you like to take just a minute and explain what that's about? Sure. So, um, yeah, on the um, third Wednesday of the month, I run a, a webinar uh, looking at an aspect of work. So uh, the thing about this webinar though is that instead of having the traditional conference style keynote and then okay any questions where you have to have planted questions in the audience because nobody's asking any questions right after the keynote speaks, um, I do away with all of that because in order to be able to ab absorb material you need to have time to reflect on it. You can't just be forced to, you know, uh, what's your question kind of thing. You need to be able to interact with the material. So the, the format of the webinar is, I think, what makes it so attractive because the presenters do their, do their bit, but then the audience is invited to go into small breakout groups to meet each other and to talk about what they've just heard. So that uh, at the end of the webinar, I ask each group for um, a nugget of conversation that they had so that they can more meaningfully engage with the material than just your typical, you know, content question and answer. Perfect. And I'll actually say that uh, we uh, joined uh, the group, uh, I guess it was last, I don't know, I'm confused with the days too, but it might have been last week, it could have been two weeks ago. Anyways, it was a great event, we met some uh, great people, and we actually invited some people back into Connect Ottawa. So I'm not even sure if you're aware of that, Tanya, but we got them tagged in a few posts, and uh, I think one was Karina, and another one was Fred, and uh, we had some great conversations in the breakout room. So uh, thank you for that, that's another thing that Connect Ottawa does, is we uh, sometimes go to events together outside of Connect Ottawa. So we even actually went to ESACs with uh, Jerry Goldsmith and I know Stefan Bernie and I uh, went there I'm not I'm not sure if any of the other people on the call were there but that was a real successful event and it's just a really great opportunity to get out and meet some people see how everybody's doing especially since we're still coming out of this uh, pandemic so on that note um, how about Stefan uh, 
who are you? What do you do? Anything new up in your life? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> uh, okay. Um, Afan is joining us, so I'm just, yeah. I'm just letting Afan get in. <laughs> Hello, Afan. Don't don't look behind you, but your plane is upside down. <laughs> <laughs> so my, my name is Stephen Metal. I'm I'm recently uh, installed into uh, the Ottawa Valley, and, and which I, I love the Ottawa Valley and the people around. Um, so my name is Stephen John Metro. I'm an experienced digital ecosystem architect and business development specialist. Uh, with over 30 years of working in the computer software industry. Um, I'm ready to support and educate entrepreneurs and corporations on ways to collaborate and coordinate more effectively with their teams during the post COVID-19 era. Remote working on that uh, by making a great usage of artificial intelligence, applied machine learning and robotic process automation. And my take on the world's economical crisis due to COVID-19 I'm a firm believer that, you know, when you are that AI, machine learning and robotic process automation applied to business workflow can empower entrepreneurs and their staff with all the tools they need to balance growth and quality in a remote work environment. This is what I'm, I'm doing. I'm helping companies and, and, and remote teams to thrive online on a digital ecosystem platform. Thank you. Good. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Um, actually, and it, was there anything happened this week that you'd like to share quickly? Yes, yes. Um, one of the most important thing when you're using a online system to get your employees, staff, teams, and customer in a single platform where they can discuss within work groups is that they need to have more than what I call the digital service. So um, I can announce that uh, this week we became an uh, international um, a strategic business partner with Lenovo. So we can now deliver Lenovo solution from a server standpoint, storage standpoint, the PCs, the laptops, the tablets, and all the services that goes in the cloud with it. Then uh, I'm going to prepare some, some interesting offer for the Connect Ottawa community that would be perks and discounts specially made for Connect Ottawa members. So I take the opportunity to invite everybody on LinkedIn here, that is live, to <laughs> go and look at Connect Ottawa. Uh, we have a LinkedIn business page, you can follow us, but you will find also on that page, the link to subscribe to the community online and join us and start networking with us. Perfect. Thank you so much. That was a great share. So like uh, Stephen was saying, come on out to Connect Daughter. We're, we're a pretty friendly lot. <laughs> and Bernie, Fran oh no, so they're just showing you a fan first. Let's do a fan first. Hi, glad you could join us, a fan. Thank you. So my name is Afan. Uh, I'm the CEO of a full service digital agency with offices in Bangladesh and Canada. Um, I also am an advisor for small businesses with uh, Invest Ottawa. Um, uh, one of the first earliest members of the group, happy to be here. Made some great friends and good connections. So thank you. Well, we're glad you're here. And you know what, if I'm going to take it one step farther, did you have any wins the last couple of weeks? Anything really exciting that happened that you'd like to share? Yes. Uh, so uh, we, uh, my first grant that I ever applied uh, was uh, uh, MX Blueprint. So it's an American Express and Ryerson University program. So they selected 100 businesses in Canada uh, from the BIPOC community and uh, we got $10,000 each. So um, $1 million was invested by American Express. So I'm one of the winners. So we are getting mentorship, uh, good network resources and the money. So, yeah. Wow, congratulations. So first That's grant applied, first grant won. So 100% success rate so far. <laughs> you gotta love that, eh? 100% success. <laughs> so fan, a fan, congratulations. And if you need assistance to spend all that money, you can call me anytime. <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, we're gonna go over to uh, Bernie. Uh, would you mind uh, sharing a little bit about you? What's been happening this past week or two? 
Well, I went to bed, woke up uh, the next day. So that, that was, I, I, I take it you're looking for a little more, a little more business yeah. depth than, <laughs> than just at TMI. Um, so uh, what do I do? I'm Bernie Francois from Creative Insight Consultants. Um, part of the, what I do is the B2B connection piece. Uh, Connect Ottawa is an end result of that uh, component, as well as I'm working with uh, Afan and Notion Hive. I'm also involved with uh, another product line called Pure Fog Canada. A disinfectant that is uh, non-toxic to people, but it goes after viruses, mold, bacteria, spores, and fungus. Um, and you can drink it. It won't kill you. Uh, you might want some yogurt afterwards, but yeah, it, it's, it's good. So uh, wins this week. Uh, uh, finding out some information about grants for people, sharing that information, making uh, more connections happen. Uh, and uh, I was talking to someone in Greece, a gentleman, he's 60 years old. He says, life's too short. He's, he's a Canadian citizen and he is in Greece. He's doing business in Europe, North Africa. And that, that's, you know, that's fluidity prior to the, to the uh, pandemic blanket smothering all of us. And I, and I think that that's, that's uplifting to hear that, right? Just, just a smile, nod and wave. And the, and the guys, uh, the guys doing uh, uh, finance, uh, financing products and stuff like that. Anyhow, that be and, and oh yes, I went out to uh, Buster's uh, Bar and Grill again yesterday. So shout out to Buster's, thank you very much. And uh, they do have that really nice scotch there still, called Lassie, and uh, that is really good. Uh, but anyhow, I, I segue on that. Okay. Over to you, Margaret Ann. Well, okay, thank you, Bernie. That's uh, that's amazing. So. Um... Okay, I guess I'll do a little introduction myself. So I'm Margaret Ann, and as I mentioned, from Fitzroy, I'm a business connector. I offer a virtual office with all the tools you need from A to Z for a business. So whether that's software, hardware, customer care, or being aware of your options, connect with me. There's never been a more significant time to show up and build real relationships with real conversations that can lead to real results for everyone. I am thrilled to have the Connect Ottawa community to keep me on track. So uh, I came on to practice my pitch. How did I do? I'm just gonna share that. <laughs> Uh, thanks, guys. So again, as I keep going back uh, with the Connect Ottawa community, it has been very cool. A fan has been around from the, the start. I met him in Ottawa uh, back, remember, at a, at a little uh, at the restaurant. I think it was a Colonnade Pizza at another business networking event. And uh, we sat down, became friends and introduced him to a circle of people here in Ottawa. And look at that. He's living in Ottawa like he came back. He's not leaving. So uh, <laughs> what's really cool about this area is we really cement these relationships and most of these people on these call are and one thing I want to share with uh, if anybody's uh, thinking about networking sometimes it is not the quantity of people you meet it's the quality of people you meet and uh, sometimes when people go to events with uh, like, you know, if there's 100 people, 50 people, or they measure the success by the number of people, I am here to share that is not always a thing. To be quite honest, we only have so much time on our hands to develop these really strong with the relationships with the people that are uh, working it both ways. So it's important to handpick the people you want to work with. And again, that's something else you can do at Connect Ottawa or going out to networking events and meeting people is finding people that are in line with you. Um, I love what Tanya's doing because she's going in and doing, the, you know, the culture in uh, corporations and stuff. But it's more, it's also important just being out with everybody. We, we don't have to be best friends with everybody. We can accept and understand how other people work. But it's also important to know that it's okay that we're not, that we're not the best with everybody, that we find our own group of people that we are in sync with. So again, if you are looking for a community that really supports you to get some introductions to people that you probably are or could be in line with, you really should come here because this group of people on here, they are big connectors in Ottawa. They show up, they are accountable, they follow up on their word. If they say they're gonna do something, they're there. And you know, more than anything, that is to me of utmost importance. Again, not the quantity, but the quality of the people that are showing up. So we invite you to come and join us. Oh, look, we have another guest today. Hassan, Hassan, are you there? 
Okay, Hassan, if you do get uh, live or want to show your face, you are more than welcome to introduce yourself with us to, today and share who you are. Oh, there, they are in the chat. Maybe somebody else can read that. Hello, I think, to everyone. Perfect. So today I'd like to take this call a little bit differently um, because we have some pretty cool people on here, as you hear me say. Um, Bernie, I would like to throw this over to you and uh, talk about the grants. You started sharing with a lot of the people of some grants, and I'm sure business people out there would like to learn a little bit more about and how to connect with you. So would you mind sharing some information on that for us? Oh, Margaret Ann, sure I will. And uh, by the way, I didn't even receive that email uh, at the end of Tuesday. So from you, um, the the grants. There are several grants out there. If you are a uh, an entrepreneur, uh, a woman under the age of thirty, there's grant money for that. If you are a female-run business or uh, underrepresented in the community, uh, there's grant money for that. Um, reach out to me and I'll, I'll direct you to a source. And if you've come up with a new idea, a new mousetrap, so to speak, or something, uh, another type of better than a, the typical slice of bread or a slice of toast, uh, get a hold of me and we'll, we'll walk and work you through the uh, potential from the grant side of the fence. And the grants can be uh, both uh, provincially based. Some of them can be uh, if you're doing eco-friendly uh, tasks or you're doing something that's green environment uh, changing, uh, there are different uh, other agencies in, in town that I can cross connect you with and uh, you can uh, have a boon. Uh, and if you have a product, that's even better. And what else to tell you? Uh, the grants, uh, they can vary anything from if you have a new a new product that um, the, the government of Canada will uh, need and or support. That's great. And so there might be an opportunity there. You have to be a Canadian citizen. You do have to have some component of it as Canadian IP, or it's coming in as um, being manufactured here in Canada. There's some, there are always some caveats, but the idea is to stimulate the growth and business and uh, promote uh, in an equal basis for everybody, regardless where you're at. And just so my, uh, my uh, contact information, uh, you can either, if you're in, in this space uh, and you're on LinkedIn, uh, just look up uh, Bernie Franzgrote uh, and you'll find me on LinkedIn. And if you ha have my email address, it's, uh, or if you don't, it's bfranzgrote at Creative Insight and Creative is spelled with a K and no, end, uh, no E in the end of uh, Creative and Insight, all one word, .com. So bfranzgrote at creativeinsight.com. Okay, cool. Well, thanks a lot, Bernie, for sharing that. It looks like you've connected with a few people on this call already. So that is just great information, especially uh, for, I, I'm not sure, I think everybody on this call might be from the Ottawa area, but of course, uh, a week ago, it was announced that uh, the CERB and a lot of uh, support from the government has actually really changed. So as small business people, if you're still challenged or struggling, these are great opportunities to get out there and uh, actually see what's available. Because I'm a big believer that, you know, the government's going to have to help us business people out because we're going to keep the economy running. Let's not kid ourselves. <laughs> We've been talking this week about the great the great resignation. And uh, with uh, Terry, uh, Tara Ashley came on and talked about knowledge is power. So uh, don't kid yourself. It's a good it's a good place to hang around with people and, and share this information so you know that what you can apply for and what's available for you. Hello, there's Coach Solomon. How are you today? Pretty good. I'm in civilian clothes today. Okay. Solomon, well, Red Lake Solomon. How's everybody doing? Good to see you guys. Great. You know what? I uh, will give you a minute. Would you like to just uh, share quickly uh, who you are and what you're doing these days? Okay. Um, uh, most of these people. Are, okay. My, uh, my name is Solomon Jones. I'm a, I reside in Allentown, Pennsylvania. I'm a marketing consultant. I specialize in video ad creation, video marketing. I'm selling a couple courses online and I met these two beautiful people, Stefan, as well as Margaret, and I'm just uh, collaborating with these guys somehow. So uh, thank you for inviting me to your community. I look forward to meeting you guys on a person, more personal basis and just take it from there. I love it. Well, uh, great to have you in our Connect Ottawa community, uh, Solomon, and getting to know you. Um, actually, uh, you are starting, uh, everybody's been doing a little bit of a share of what they're doing. You're starting a new network. And would you mind just sharing what that's called and what you're doing? What's well, called, uh, first it started off as the Black Link. And then uh, when I tried to make a, uh, it's actually a business page on LinkedIn. And uh, I was initially going to create a community with it using Mighty Networks. 
uh, but I couldn't get the name the Black Link, so I changed it to Black Black Rivers. Um, it's not really like a revolutionary Black Panther thing. Uh, it's really just about uh, my observations on a on a on a on a niche on um, online that can be. I'm not gonna say exploited, but it's probably profitable. I noticed like a lot of um, Black entrepreneurs online. I think a lot of these guys they don't know how to network. And um, a lot of them don't know how to uh, approach social media so that they can, you know, benefit themselves. So that's pretty much what it's about. It's just attacking that particular uh, niche right there, uh, Black people worldwide in the community. And that's the reason why it's called Black Rivers is because um, I think uh, most people know that mm, I think it's somewhat of an organic reach problem on most social media websites. So that's one of the uh, taglines I have on the website is that there's no algorithms, just Black businesses. So I think I'll probably produce a lot of you know results with it because of the environment, what's going on in the world. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so I think I'll be able to do a lot of things with it, but only, only time will tell. Okay, cool. And uh, before you came on, I was talking about uh, how, like, you know, we share, uh, you know, these stories and uh, resources and uh, with each other so we can actually just uh, learn and be better together. So uh, thanks for coming on and sharing that. And we'll watch your journey in uh, the Connect Ottawa uh, network. Um, so today we are at 1235, so we still got some time. And I was thinking, what is a question? It, it, have you had a burning question? Now, this could be something that you're looking for, something that you, uh, you need to learn, uh, something that you've met somebody and you're going, you know, I, I still don't understand, or whatever it is. What is a question you would like to ask the group or perhaps someone that is part of the group right now or to throw out into the community? Is there anything that anybody can think of while they're sitting there going, yeah, you know, how, how does this work? Yay, a fan. So I just want general question. How do you think all of you feel the our business development or sales approaches should change or has changed because of what COVID has brought into the world? So what we tend to refer to as the new normal, how is the sales or business development different in your perspectives in the new normal? I think this is something that should affect all of us. So I guess we can discuss this. Okay, St uh, Stefan, you wanted to speak? Yeah, totally. So I found raised a great question today, like how COVID-19 affected our relationship as business developers, because we need uh, to be in business and we need to connect with people and build relationship. Prior to COVID, most of things were done in person, you know, face-to-face. -face. There was a lot of community involved and, and that was how the things were, you know, um, executed. Uh, people were going to convention, trade fairs, and also having like one-to-one -one appointments from one place to another. That was the uh, sales reps work or everybody in business or in business development had to do that. Then uh, uh, since we got those lockdowns and those stay-at-home orders, everybody has to, you know, shift uh, to another um, mode of building relationship. And there has been a, an extensive use of video conferences that end up at, at some point with that famous Zoom fatigue. And things have totally changed because people had to develop more um, um, acute um, sense of organization and time management to go from one web meeting to another. And that has totally, you know, changed the way people were reacted because instead of being, you know, uh, in front of people, you are just jumping from one screen to another. Most of people were using one screen, but now if you are having a Zoom screen, you're looking here, but actually, everything that you're doing on your computer is on second screen. So most of people purchase the second screen. People have to go to buy a better webcam. So that has totally changed the way people were organized on their desk. And then after how they were behaving through that, because when you are into a week and you have to organize yourself, you need to have a clear purpose of what you're gonna talk about during the 20 minutes meeting 15 minutes meeting, 
whatsoever. Then after, you know, what you were doing, you know, driving your car, having phone calls while driving, that was not wise, but that was no longer, uh, you know, the, the fact. So yes, I, I totally agree with that, with the fan that the way we were doing business has become more digital uh, now than it was prior to the, uh, the, the lockdown. Perfect. I, I might like to add some to that. I think that things have changed as well because, uh, well, they obviously changed. But what I do miss is when I uh, did a lot of networking in person is you had the break. If you were driving from a call to a call or for a coffee or something or to an event, you actually had some downtime. What I find now is that we keep ourselves so scheduled that, you know, we're turning around and next thing it's like, you know, five o'clock at night and it's like, where the heck did the day go? And you didn't take any me time. So I find that is a challenge. Um, so sometimes you will hear my computer come on, like it will come on at one o'clock and it will say it's one o'clock. That is to remind me that another hour has passed. I find that a big challenge. And before we go to somebody else, I'm just going to, hey, Hassan, uh, nice to see you on our call today. Uh, I'll give you the opportunity to introduce yourself. We haven't met. You, you need to unmute. You need oh, to unmute you, yourself, Hassan. Oh, you, no, you don't want to unmute? Uh, no, there's oh, not okay. a microphone, I guess. Okay. I don't think he can. Okay, no problem. What about you, Ken? Are you able to unmute? Okay, maybe he's not. Okay, well, I did try. So uh, leave your information in the box. Uh, if this is your uh, first uh, meeting with anybody here. Uh, okay, what is that he's showing me? So is Ken, that Ken, is back. Ken is back and he can introduce himself. <laughs> okay, uh, you are welcome to join us in the Connect Ottawa community as well. Ken, would you like to share who you are? Um, yeah, I just got an invite for this. I'm a business consultant and a business coach, and I help uh, information technology and software companies be able to increase their gross profit margins by up to 5% and, uh, and their cash flow up to 300% without spending additional money on marketing and advertising. You know, every business has leaks, so I help businesses find those leaks and plug them. And then, I, and, then, and then I become the advisor to the business owner as far as their advisor. Okay, nice. Well, uh, thank you for joining us. Are, what part of uh, the woods, neck of the woods are you from? I'm in Florida. <laughs> I just love meeting all these people in hot spots. <laughs> This way, as we travel down, you know, and we're finally able to cross the border from Canada to the States, we'll have all these places to go meet you guys at networking events. <laughs> then, so thank then you. When I buy the house in Costa Rica, then you'll probably love me even more. <laughs> Costa Rica. Stop that, Ken. Stop that right now. <laughs> Did I say the beach, the beach house in Costa Rica? <laughs> And we're at seven. We're at seven degrees Celsius here, and or eight degrees Celsius in Canada right now. Uh, it, apparently, it's semi sunny outside, and uh, that translates to about fifty degrees, fifty five degrees yeah. Fahrenheit. So you're That's warm. Twenty three degrees Celsius here now, which I'm sure you love to hear. Yeah. So all the snowbirds from Canada will be heading down to see you guys in your warm area. But anyways, thanks a lot, Ken, for, for joining if I, us. If I talk long enough, though, you'll realize I'm from Minnesota. I know you betcha. So I know what the cold is like. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we were going around and asking, like, is there a burning question or something that you'd like to ask, uh, you know, a business person or something or something you've been wondering about? And a fan, that was a great question. Do you mind, uh, do you mind reiterating what you would ask the group? Uh, the same question again. Mm -hmm. Or yeah. Oh yeah. And so I was just I was just wondering how you, each of you feel COVID has changed the way we business develop or or improve our sales. Like so, uh, that's that was the question basically. Okay. So does anybody else want to jump yeah, in? Yeah, just jump that? in if that's okay. okay. Um, actually, for TV and film, business has increased during COVID and during lockdown because everybody's sitting and watching their Netflix shows, right? You need your TV, I guess, to keep you entertained. Uh, but everything did go digitally. So all the auditions and stuff like that. So I think because now the Ottawa actors don't have to drive all the way to Toronto to do auditions for four hours, they can just film at their house, they're booking more. So my bookings have increased like marginally just because they can just film at home and there's not that stress of traveling and going to the auditions. So I, I feel very fortunate that my business has increased during COVID. I know that's not really the case for most businesses, but I just... 
uh, yeah, the film and TV industry is still doing very, very well. So That's nothing's awesome. really changed other than probably the way of the process of auditions and how to, they, everything's online now, everything. So on that note, like it's actually through COVID, I think it's uh, turned even if everybody isn't on track right now or getting there or pivoting or, you know, was that word when we first went into the pandemic, it's actually, I bet you, helped people get their processes in order and be much more efficient. I would maybe entertain to say, Solomon, what about you as a coach? Has things changed for you? I would say yes. Uh, I think even before the COVID um, came into the picture, you know, I guess you have Fortune 500 companies that are shutting down because they're not adapting to the online environment. Uh, obviously, the COVID has only exploded the need for people who know what they're doing online. So that's been to my advantage. Thank God. Uh, actually, during the course, the course of the COVID, I actually had the opportunity to get my game to where it needs to be, build my websites, my courses during the course of the entire year. Now the courses are established. I'm just ready to go and rip. So it's been to my advantage. I haven't gotten sick. I got the shot. I'm, I'm, I have no problems so far. You know, and everybody that's sharing something here, I can really relate to because that's really what I've done for the last year. You know, sad or good, I don't know which it is. Uh, it's the only time in my life that I've been able to collect some income and reinvent what I was doing. Um, so to me, uh, I'm like you, Solomon, right now, we've been working on a lot of products and getting ready to launch with some really cool things. And, uh, being in a pandemic allowed me to be able to transition to something new. Afan, I'm going to throw the question back to you. I, I got one question if, if, oh. if, if, if nobody has some or, yeah. Okay. I, 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 yeah, sorry. Uh, sorry, just, I, I threw the question back to Afan okay. and then we'll come to your question. How, I wanted yes, to see yes, what yes. Afan's uh, answer was to his question. So I actually don't have a specific answer because that's why I, I asked the question because I'm confused. But I think... Uh, and I mentioned this, I think, in one of our mastermind sessions before. COVID has taken off the, uh, you know, the bullshit mask that we all have in life, generally speaking. And I'm sorry if anybody's offended by it, but generally there is a lot of things that we did before when we bitted around the bush of saying discussions, you know, not having real, uh, real uh, relationships. It was all about, well, I need to do better. I need to have this relationship uh, just for the sake of business and so on. So I think that has fundamentally changed. And I feel the previous ways of just selling for the sale, you know, sake of selling will no longer work. So you have to provide some kind of value uh, for sure to the other person. Even if you have uh, no chance of winning that deal, there will always be something for the future for, for, you know, that my person might come back to you, that my person might give you recommendations or, or, you know, karma might work, whatever it is that you call it. So th th that is what I think fundamentally has changed, but I might be wrong and I am confused also. You know, it's not like I've done a PhD on this subject. So that, and that is why I asked the question in the first place. So, you know, okay, well, has... that's great. Uh, th thank you, Fan. Um, yeah. Maybe I could just offer that. I, okay, I can remember on. just when, when Fan was talking, um, he reminded me that, you know, uh, at my former workplace um, in, I guess it was 2019, I was pushing uh, to be able to do, uh, I think it was WebEx calls with um, our counterparts in different areas of the world. So I know that we had set up some calls with people in Switzerland and I can remember them saying how wonderful it was that, you know, that this was happening because uh, otherwise, we'd have to wait for some conference to be able to actually have these types of discussions and make sure that actually that the conference had some free time or skip sessions at a conference that which would we then regret and you know all this kind of thing. So you know I can remember the you know the expression of wow this is fantastic you know thank you so much for making this happen. Well then come come the lockdowns and everybody is at home my world exploded because that interaction that I described became everybody's interaction. And it was just amazing to be able to be connected with people from literally all over the world on 
all sorts of amazing topics that otherwise I would never ever have had the chance to do. So I think, um, you know, notwithstanding a lot of the suffering that, and I don't want to, I don't want to diminish that, you know, COVID has impacted a lot of people negatively. Personally, I have, uh, I think, benefited by many fold um, because of this digital interaction, being able to meet people that I would never have had the chance to meet before. So. Tanya, I love it. It's like that silver lining, you know, we talk about it and sometimes it's like, oh, really, it sounds corny or whatever. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm with you as well. Uh, karma, the universe or whatever, I believe everything happens exactly the way it's supposed to happen, even if it was a COVID to bring us together in a different way, to connect with people across the world. I don't know, to change the world, to change ideas, to introduce. And, you know, uh, Solomon, we were having a chat this week when he's doing his Black River Network and he's going, well, it had really nothing to do with the culture it was like that was blah 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 and I'm going hey Solomon that doesn't matter because everything that's happening in these last few years anybody that stands up and makes a point and has a voice uh, this is the time for the, the people on these calls to be the leaders stand up be recognized and and take the lead because it's sometimes challenging so thanks sharing that Tanya Stefan now you said you had a question you wanted to pose to the group yeah, yes, because I'm, I'm, I'm quite interested in how uh, COVID affected people's uh, uh, life. And, and most of my, my main interest is about your business life. And I was wondering you know, if people here in, in that room could share about what change on your uh, overview on, on your desk because of the COVID. Did you have to adapt? in the new gear, new devices and things like that? Or did you keep going with what you had prior to uh, COVID-19? Okay, that's a good question. What were the main changes in your- I know before your, uh, COVID, I used to have like a hundred business cards and then I started fresh. I threw them all out and said, okay, this is ridiculous. I'm never going to go through them all. Uh, so what about everybody out there? What has changed on your desk? Is there anything uh, that you've noticed that you've done away with and life is simpler or is it more challenging? Hmm. I think a lot of things have changed. I mean, I mean, I think I guess you could talk about this for days. Uh, like, you know, that you're going to be sitting home at this computer. So you have to be conscious that you get up every half hour and try to do something physical to make sure you don't develop blood clots, so on and so forth. Uh, just to be more active as far as exercise is concerned, working more on my cardiovascular, jumping rope, running. And that's just for my physical health. But then, um, you know, I, I think that. I don't know. I guess because the type of business that I have, I had an idea of what I wanted to do, but I realized as time goes forward, reality sets in and it shapes and mold how you present yourself as well as the type of business that you're actually being. And I, based on that, you really discovered an actual, a true need as opposed to what you think people need. And um, I've been able to really just sharpen and harness my, my, you know, my abilities online when it comes to marketing. I think even before COVID, if you weren't in some way, shape, form, or fashion heading in the direction of trying to establish some type of presence online, like I think you're like in a lot of trouble because obviously it's just it's, it's just exploding now. So I'm just happy that I had the foresight to see that, and I'm just happy to be here with you guys. You know. Cool. Well, thank you for sharing that. Anybody else got more comments about something that's changed on their desktop? You mean your literal desktop? It could be a literal desktop. Is it? Uh, did you I'm used sorry. to have? Do you used to have a little? I don't know. Uh, I've got two screens. I don't have business cards. I've tried to get more digitally organized. I think I am. I, I use a lot. Uh, I, when you're asking that question, calendars were. I've actually went so much more digitalized now. I guess than just paper. I guess that's what he, like one of the questions you're kind of asking, Stefan? Yeah, I think uh, Solomon is, is just sharing uh, one of the gear he, he probably acquired uh, because he's, um, he's a great video marketer and, and, uh, and he had, I think, optimized his setup with a professional uh, microphones, right? That are used for podcasts or um, audio soundtracks to get some voiceover and so on and so forth. So, you know, this is one of the sense of my question. 
COVID changed everything in everyday life. We have to move more because we are more static. But again, what are you? What are we doing during our days with with what devices? You know, did you have to change your phone because you have a flip phone before? Then then you have to now have a like a swipe screen phone, or did you did you purchase a, something bigger such as a tablet? I've seen I've seen Solomon using tablets recently <laughs> on Unified platform. So I don't know if you guys were working with one screen, then you had to purchase a second one, or people were working with two screens, then they purchased a third one, like I did. I don't know. You know, COVID changed many things, and that, that's that's more or less my question. What that's changed prior to to your first setup before COVID? Bernie. I think getting uh, much to what Solomon was saying earlier, you got to get that uh, every 30 minutes stand up and uh, stretch. Uh, it's going to be important always to make sure you're wearing pants uh, when you do that, if you're in a seated <laughs> environment. Uh, I've, I've been at one meeting where someone was uh, prepping us to, you know, for a, an important meeting and your backdrop mattered. And uh, Buddy got up and uh, he was wearing his boxers and I was like, <laughs> well, I wasn't expecting that. Nope, that's left field. Uh, you know, nothing, nothing on tour to beyond that. But it's like, and he says, "Oh, my pants are right over here." Uh, you know, <laughs> you know, mute, 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 and uh, dim the lights first before you do that magic moment, right? Um, so there, there's etiquette. You know, there's etiquette when we uh, go to meetings, and now that's another another form of etiquette. You have etiquette you have to learn in this space, right? And just mm -hmm. same pieces, uh, same pieces of the puzzle. Um, but, you know, getting out, uh, getting away from the desk, moving around. I've done a 12-hour Zoom day with a few bio breaks in the middle, and that did not bode well. Uh, it's, you know, you're stiff, right? And so it's not good. So, you know. Right. Yeah. Okay. I think that that's interesting, Bernie. Uh, you know what, guys? We're at 1257. I'm sure that's uh, I'll jump. Thanks a lot for your. Okay. So, Fan uh as we get here, because there's probably have a lot of people going on to another call at one o'clock. So, uh, Stefan, when you say that, I, I look at, okay, I'm just going to kick a, a quick snapshot. Yes, I have a small screen. I've got on my wish list to get a bigger screen because I have a little laptop and that's actually quite annoying. And I notice being on it all the time. I'm pretty well buggy by the end of the day and I don't want to talk to anybody. So it might make me happier to have a bigger screen. Uh, business cards gone. Uh, you, like you said, bio breaks and stuff like this. I miss the traveling in some respects, but I don't miss the prices of gas since they're at $1.50 now. Um, I don't miss, I, when we're on a budget, the fact is being at home, it's a little bit cheaper because you pre prepare your own meals. Technically, they're supposed to be healthier. Um, <laughs> there's, I think there's good and bad about each thing. Uh, for me, perfectly, what I would love to do is go out at least once a month and have a meeting uh, with the Connect Dog. Well, you know, in Ottawa, in Solomon, I'll come down, like, you know, we'll go across the world. But for now, we'll just start in Ottawa and uh, do that face to face connection. So we can actually see people and read their read their faces and uh, really, you know, it just strengthens relationships when we're together. Although this has been very good. And like Tanya said, we've met people all across the world as a result of it. Mind you, she was up at 3.30 this morning with a call. And where were you talking to people from? So the host is in um, the UK. He's in Scotland and uh, the guest is in Australia. Okay. So time differences has been challenging a little bit. So guys, it's 12.59. Um, Stefan, uh, fan's gone, but anyways, great questions. Uh, so Tuesday, as Bernie mentioned, we have another call and Tuesday it is, who, what are we talking about again, Bernie? Stuff. Uh, we're talking about uh, green apple pay and it is how to do uh, digital fundraising. So it's a SaaS model. And then on Wednesday, we have the uh, core VIP at 8 PM Eastern standard time. And that involves, uh, two elements. One is oh, the, uh, Doing a video uh, for LinkedIn and or a two minute uh, piece. Uh, we have uh, uh, David Fedorik, uh, who's going to be, uh, Fodrick, who's going to be speaking then. And then we have Alan uh, Stevens talking afterwards, and it's about reading people and uh, getting an accurate read based, based on biology. 
I love that. It's uh, one o'clock. So Bernie has put the link in uh, the uh, event. Normally our VIPs are $10 or $20, uh, $10 an event, or we charge uh, $20 to be part of the membership. And uh, we have a lot more uh, coming up in the next uh, month uh, that Bernie and Stefan and I will be announcing, which is uh, exciting. Um, and November 10th, I'm going to do a little self-promotion. We're going to talk about AI and office experience uh, at uh, two o'clock in the afternoon. That will be Stefan and I. So I'll also put that link in. Tanya's got her event the third Wednesday of the month. So there's lots of opportunity out here to go and network with people and uh, build some relationships, especially if you want to network across the world. So, and Solomon, next time you're on, you'll have to tell us if there's any networking events down there that you go to that we should be attending. Yeah. Actually, networking as far as like what we're doing now, sketch. I'm kind of new to it, so oh. I'm actually, you know, just taking down notes, trying to figure it out myself to see, you know, what to bring as well as what I can get out of it. You know? Okay, well, here I'll, as we leave it because it is one on one, so people have to jump off. But here's the here's one of the biggest tips to come with, and I didn't even do it today, is to come with your LinkedIn profile, your name, and maybe a couple of lines of who you are and what you do. So you can copy and paste that into the chat box so that everybody can connect with you on LinkedIn afterwards. Mm -hmm. Or at, for here, we want to invite you into the Connect Ottawa Network because this is the first start of a relationship. The second is reaching out to the people or even if it's one person a week. One person a week is 52 people a year. Uh, so pick somebody that you'd like to connect with and just have a casual conversation. We call it a discovery call, a campfire chat. I don't care what you call it, but just a relationship where you're not selling you're actually just getting to know them. So then you can figure out if that is a relationship that you want to further and how you can help each other. In the business community, we are one. So on that note, I'm going to let you all go because it is 101. Appreciate you. I do want to make one comment from Margaret. Yeah. If you're looking for a big monitor and they were, they're not that expensive anymore, they, um, I don't know if they have Sam's Club up there in Canada or not, but if you go to Sam's Club, um, you can go buy a, a 32 inch curved monitor for about $200. Okay. Yes. And you know what? Stefan has a curved monitor, and apparently that's a little bit easier on your eyes, eh? Really? I love I have I have one. I'm, I have one I'm talking to you on right now, and I, I love it because it was only $200, and I wanted to get three more of them from my desk. And my wife was like, ah, oh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> As we grow the wall of monitors, eh? <laughs> yeah. I wanted to go too high, you know, for my monitors. <laughs> have, a, have, a, have, have my own heads-up display. That's not the way to get a suntan, man. <laughs> <laughs> just, just saying. So, and here's another... Uh, I'm going to share one more tip before we leave because we did do our first live with the VIP call today and uh, an extra way to just uh, share who you are is go in the comment of the live and share your share your website or your LinkedIn profile or uh, maybe a little thought about what you thought of the call so uh, people can also reach reach out to you so we will be sharing this video over on to the Connect Ottawa Connect Ottawa, not Ottawa Connect, Connect Ottawa. We have a face, uh, uh, we have a LinkedIn page, we have a Facebook page, plus we are on Meetup. So we are not going to lose you guys. So we hope yeah. to stay connected. And thank you all for joining us today. Yeah. On that and, and before the before the lights are going out, I would like to, to uh, give a big shout out to uh, to Tanya Hewitt because she's doing a great session with Beyond Safety Compliance. I've been to one of our uh, sessions. And I can tell you guys, networking in Connect Ottawa is worth it. You meet great people, but it's not only that. When you go to their event, you discover new things, which I did. I've never had that kind of experience where things were um, explained so simply. And I'm telling you guys, Tanya's sessions are amazing. They are interactive. And I don't want to, you know, to oversell things, but she's doing some growth. So you can earn something or win something, <laughs> actually. But it's not about, you know, the, the perks, the bells and the whistles. You are going back home. Technically, you stay in your chair. Now, I get that. But you have new faces, new con connection. But when the session ends, you have way more knowledge by those sharing experiences that Tanya is conducting. Absolutely. So Thank I'm, you, I'm Stephane, really for sharing that. It's 104. To, to, to Tanya's, <laughs> Tanya's patience. Have a good Let's afternoon. Let's go, guys.